Kastuba Das here with a big announcement for Wisdom of the Sages listeners. This August will be Ashram Month at the Super Soul Farm. Simple ashram living, rising early, morning kirtan, yoga and pranayama, healthy vegan and vegetarian meals, farm seva and being immersed in nature, and then gathering in the evenings for kirtan and readings. Plus, each week we'll have a lead presenter teaching a different facet of the philosophy and lifestyle of bhakti yoga. Week number one will be the exceptional bhakti lata teaching a course called The Beauty of Bhakti, bringing the culture of love and devotion into our lives. Week number two is my brother from another mother, Raghunath, teaching Falling in Love with Divinity, the Bhakti Yogi's method for opening the heart. And week number three is myself with a course called Following the Path, examining the history and teachings of Bhakti Yoga. You can come for one, two, or all three weeks, and the pricing is by donation. For more dates and information, go to wisdomthesages.com slash events. Peace. From the EU, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kaustuba Das. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's Q&A day here at Wisdom of the Sages, and we are gearing up for our Italy retreat, which is sold out. we got like 80 people coming. And look who's here already. I see a Kiko-san in the back of Kaustuba. Yes. You know, she's even, do you know she's in your apartment right now? I, oh my gosh. <laughs> Kiko-san is here. Sri Rupa's here. Shirupa's here. It's like live, live. You never do the live, live. I know. And I'm going without the headphones today. We're going to see how it goes. Is it t- let us know if there's any kind of uh, cycle echo thing going on. No, I could Wait, be doing this all you. the time. That's Mayor's fault. Sorry. What? There was a loop there. It's not it your was? headphones. You sure? We're good. Okay. Great. It, so anyway, have if to you're new to the show anymore. listening on Facebook, welcome. We do this every Saturday. We take questions. And every day you can hear this podcast wherever you get podcasts or YouTube. Just search Wisdom of the Sages. Um, we talk about yoga philosophy, um, uh, the essential teachings of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and how to connect the jiva with God, with Bhagavan, with the divine, with Ishwara, whatever you want to call God. And today we take questions. And Kostuba, do you have any announcements? Or Mary, you got any announcements before we start? Mary? We should mention that there's no show tomorrow or Monday. Correct. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be back at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Regular time. Yeah. We got travel time going on. Okay. I don't think I have any other announcements except that, uh, you know, people can still sign up for the Sage Groups. Get over there to wisdomofsages.com slash Sage Groups and uh, sign up for a group. All righty. Let's get into questions, brother. Well, we're moving fast today, Raghunath. You know, it's like... He's not used to this. <laughs> that's cool usually i've got stuff to say all right have anything to say do i have any squirrels to say that i might have mentioned earlier mara i don't think so i'm squirrel free okay this is from our discord thread so if you're part of our patreon crew and you support us through that you have access to the discord thread these guys are all talking to each other all day long we have 800 people, over 800 people on our Discord thread. On the wow. Discord thread, wow. Okay. This is from Jordy via Jordy. Discord. And multi-part question. This is for both of us. What is it that really makes you believe Krishna is real, Kastuba? Mm. Was there a certain experience, like an enlightenment, like gong? Um, I want to believe, but I'm not quite there. Two. Here's a part two of that question. What does it mean to embrace or surrender to Krishna in this life. Okay. Why don't you start that? Why don't you start it? Okay, well, let's start with question number one. What is it that really makes you believe Krishna is real? Yeah. Was there a certain experience you had, perhaps? Well, you know, um, it's a combination of many factors, right? I I would say, but I would say for myself, um, it really began with when I was a teenager or about yeah 19 or 20 years old i i began to read Srila Prabhupada's books and i found that there was a philosophy of life there that really seemed to snap into place where, where wherever i was looking elsewhere it all I, I always found holes in it i always found you know i always found certain things just didn't really make sense to me or sound to be really viable at least fully I could find wisdom and insights from different traditions, but I never found anything that put it all together, like Srila Prabhupada's explanations 
uh, coming from Vedanta, right? Coming from Bhagavad Gita, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and all that. It, it, so the different books, everything I was reading from it, it, it all clicked. And I'll say that, you know, the ideas of karma and reincarnation uh, had a lot to do with that. At that point in my life, the, the, the whole theme of vegetarianism played in with that. And all of it was kind of clicking together, as well as like, you know, ideas of simple living and high thinking, you know, like the whole direction, you know, there seemed to be a very ancient philosophy that was bringing forward these uh, very ancient, but still relevant ideas. And not only that, like, that's like the karma, the reincarnation and so on. But then along with that, it was coming out of like um, a culture that seemed to have a lot of answers too, you know, and, and through that culture, there was all these different sciences, you know, yoga asana, Ayurveda, you know, things like pranayama and vastu and astrology and so on. And the more that I just started to search into, into all these different subjects, the more that I found just like a kind of consistent, thorough, logical, reasonable, um, sophisticated, integrated, um, pre- integrated yeah, holistic kind of presentation about life in general. And, and, and it, it was, I was just, you know, so impressed. So that my faith is, was built like that, you know, now it's because of all that. Now, now we get to, well, I'll say it like this, as the years have gone by, um, all of these teachings have begun to mean more to me in terms of how they provide answers for challenges in life, right? When I was a 20 year old, um, you know, I, I don't know, I guess I wasn't as involved my own life was less developed and and um and the people that i was hanging out with it was, their lives were less developed as i grow older and i see all the challenges that people go through and i go through the challenges of my own and people that are dear to me also do as well i really see how more than ever how the philosophy really answers life's challenges how it gives us the perspective or the paradigms that we need to thrive in life you know to thrive in this world and i see them as being effective so Faith continues to grow, you know, and then maybe getting right to the heart of uh, Jordy's question about like, because the way that it was phrased was like, why do you believe that Krishna is real? Mm. You know, the more that I've studied and practiced and I'd say meditated on um, Krishna's Leela, you know, the, 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 the theology, the theology behind it all, the more that I have to just honestly the more that you go into the theology of Krishna, the more that I just have to, one, understand that even after 35 years or so, I've only begun to scratch the surface. But whatever I've found has a beauty and a sophistication and a consistency to it that it just continues to blow my mind. And so, you know, it's, you know, read the Chaitanya Charitamrita, read the Srimad Bhagavatam, read the Bhagavad Gita, read the commentaries on it, Practice it in your life uh, and, and see the consistency, see the beauty in it. And, and as I do that more and more and more over the years, I become more and more convinced. And there's one thing that I left out, one other factor. And that is really, and this was an early factor. Uh, th- this was a factor that came on early in my life. But seeing the people that practiced it, not all the people, right? <laughs> like I, I wouldn't say that all the people that are practicing it would have have maybe, let's say, would have increased my faith, but there's certain people right? Certain people that I've known, many, I would say many, that I've seen have taken this into their life and, and most, really most. become, yeah, I mean, most in some sense, but I'm, I'm saying like, as a 20 year old, if I was, I, I look at it from a different angle now, and I say most, if I look at it from the angle that I was from back then, I would be looking around and saying, okay, not everybody here is blowing my mind. But like, there are some people that are really impressing me here. Right. And, uh, and, and, I want to be like that. I see that they're they're connecting, they're understanding this, they're living it. It's transformational. It's dynamic. I want to follow along in that path. So, it's really a, it's my faith is built on all of these different factors, and, and um, it, again, seeing the consistency in them, and and, uh, and as I, be, you know, what I'll add one more thing to it, Ragna, and that is, I have my own personal experiences too. You know, just like whether it be. You know, I don't want, I want to be careful sharing this with you because where you might go with it. But like, I, I mean, like, in other words, I have dreams, I have feelings, I feel like God speaks to me, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, internally, I've, 
I'm not going to share any. <laughs> Tell Come me. On. Tell me about those Tell dreams. Some of your mystical experiences. <laughs> so I don't want to make a big thing out of my so-called mystical experiences because honestly, I'm not one of these guys that's like got a lot to share on that. But but I do. You know, I do have like internal convictions and special things have happened in my life, whether in life Give me one. or in dreams. Give me one. I'm not giving you nothing. Nothing. Why Maybe would, I will. Why you, would you, you answer. Develop you, you, our faith. To develop our faith. Because some those things are that? personal, and I and I don't know if it'll develop anyone's faith. It may even have the opposite effect. You know. They so. may think you're crazy. Yeah, they may think I'm crazy. You don't so worry about those like, things. I, I do, right? <laughs> People sometimes say, "I saw Krishna." Yeah, I didn't see yeah. Krishna yet. I I wouldn't pull out those. I had a dream about Prabhupada. I've had many dreams. I've about had Prabhupada. many dreams about Prabhupada, man. My guru said that he said that. um the very new devotees, like that are like brand new. Yeah. He said the, the, the more like, you know, longer practiced devotees, they generally dream of Prabhupada. They don't dream of Krishna. And he said that, but very brand new people, they dream of Krishna. That's what he found, you know, after many years of people coming and sharing with him. Have you ever dreamt of Krishna? Of Krishna, but I've, I've dreamt of gurus a lot. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. I once had a dream of Srila Prabhupada sitting on the stage in CBGB. Somehow my mind was putting together like right on like Lower East Side, 26 Second Avenue and Prabhupada. And I walked in, there was nobody in, in CBGBs. I walked in there all alone. It was dark. Srila Prabhupada was all alone on the stage. I went down, I bowed down. And then I looked up and then Srila Prabhupada said something to me. And then I woke up. What did he say? I'm not going to tell you. Instruction, anything about me? Did he say anything about me? <laughs> had absolutely nothing to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear my Prabhupada dream. I had a, I had a few Prabhupada dreams. So let me tell, the most okay. memorable one was yeah. I had a dream. You know, there's all these, all these pictures of Prabhupada walking on the beach, either in Mumbai um, or in Venice Beach. Prabhupada would walk on the beach with all the sannyasis. And I dreamt I was part of them walking. Okay. And Prabhupada looked over. to, t And sometimes we think of like the saints of India and this great Goswami lived 500 years ago or a thousand years ago, Prabhupada started telling me about all the Acharyas that are going to appear. Get out. Is that a cool dream? What did he say? Like <laughs> Who's coming? And he said, you, Raghu, are the next. <laughs> <laughs> he said there'll be a girl, a young girl from Lebanon. She will arise. Her name is, is she will rise like all compassion, the Karuna. <laughs> Her name will be Karuna. No, but he told me if you think about it, if you think all these people that are going to take birth to change the world, it's very exciting. And you never know, they could be walking amongst us right now. I okay. think we had a show bit called, it was about a year ago that we did it, right? Acharyas are being born. Which, mm -hmm. Remember that? When we're not in LA, we Maybe did that. I told that my dream before. Anyway, can I just jump in with this answer? No, this please take well. it over. It's all yours. Uh, Run with it. Uh, you could do the rest of the show on this because I want to hear what you have to say. Well, it's nothing that much different than you, except that, you know, I read the philosophy and stuff like that. But then this girlfriend of mine, who we are both getting into bhakti together, um, she said, you know, Raghu, and she, I went out way on tour and came back and she was living in the ashram. I was like, what are you doing? I thought you always thought these Hare Krishnas were crazy. She's like, <laughs> Raghu, you've done everything else. Just chant the Maha Mantra. Oh, no, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I know who this is. So so you were friends with her and you were both kind of like semi-curious we were about both sort of like going to the temple, sure. thinking it's weird. Thought it was weird, but sort of liked it. And then, and then all of a sudden she's on, full on. Then, then I went away on tour. She came back full on. You, you came back and she was full on. She was full on. Right. Okay. Living in the temple. It was right. It was, uh, Prima and, and you're like, they got her. They she she's she fell for it. She's into she it. fell for it. That was it. She came to join the cult. <laughs> and then she's one of the people telling you, no, man, you got to give it a yeah, try. She used to she, she she used to what do you call it? She used to, you know, tell me, oh, this is too crazy. And I'd be like, I don't know. It's sort of cool. And then she told me it was crazy. And then she got into it. So then I came back from tour. She says, Raghu, you've tried everything. Just chant one round a day. Mm -hmm. And that commitment to seeing are you real krishna i'm gonna take a step forward just like if i say there's something in this in the closet and and you just don't go to the closet then you're never gonna find out if there's something actually in the closet you say you know what? i'm gonna walk towards that closet okay. i'm gonna step but it's different because krishna is actually a living being he's the original living being so you take a step towards krishna he's coming out of the closet he's jumping out of the closet and so then the magic starts to happen. And I will say that just going to the temple at that time in my life, that romancing of Krishna, 
it was things were happening magically and quickly and running yeah. into people and meeting people. And then when I made that commitment to chanting one round a day, I, I watched magic happen quicker. And I, and I, and I, I went into it with a very, oh, I was, listen, I wasn't a New Yorker. So I'm, I'm suspicious of everybody and everything. Um, now that being said, I started getting more and more committed. And like Kostuba said, I started meeting people who really impressed me. Mm -hmm. um, just ha actually had that their intelligence was so sharp. They could, what, do I, what, what I mean by impress was yeah. they could answer the questions that were deep in my heart. No, no I, BS, no, no clouding it over, being vague and trying to play it off as like spiritual. No, like real and, answers, right? And I met Consistent. a lot of phony baloney gurus um, yeah. that were not part of our tradition. And I just felt like, you know what, that, you're nonsense. After I heard it laid out by the Bhakti Vedantas, the people mm -hmm. following uh, Bhakti path. And I was, I was not that new. I mean, I, I already had studied Ayurveda. I had studied yoga and I really was eager to understand. And I felt like it is a very, very wide gate, a very broad understanding of spirituality. It wasn't like a narrow thing. Um, Eastern thought it's a very broad thing. And it, it, again, it is the thread that ties these pearls of wisdom. Every culture has a pearl of wisdom. And I felt like the Vedic culture was the reservoir or the thread that ties all these pearls together. And so, and I, I, I also have told this funny story before, but um, I was hanging out with the Cro-Mags and they were all just preaching to me. And, where were you? Um, where, I was right outside of CBGB's. Okay. Was Harley and Giant Under were preaching to me and just preaching to me. And I was like, all right, whatever. And, and then they <laughs> left and then their guitar You're player like, do I have came. to do this? <laughs> <laughs> their guitar player came and he was like totally anti-Krishna. He said, oh yeah. Are you going to believe those guys? Listen, they believe, these crazy Krishna guys, you know what they believe? They believe the supreme, absolute truth, the origin of everything, you know, the origin of the earth, the origin of the universe, the origin of the cosmos is a little blue cowherd boy. And I yeah. said, and, and I didn't say anything. I was like, yeah, that is sort of, I said sort of like, yeah, that is sort <laughs> yeah, of weird. Yeah. But in my mind, I was thinking, well, why not? Why not? Like, what do I know? You got a better I, explanation? I Let's hear you. Yeah. to understand I don't know anything. I don't know what's around the corner, what to speak, what's on the other side of the cosmos. So to this day, practicing bhakti since 1988, John Mastami, 1988, I moved into an ashram. I don't know that Krishna is a blue cowherd boy. I mean, Krishna, do I know that God is a blue cowherd boy? I don't know that, but I know that faith comes in small increments. And as I move forward on this path, more and more stuff that seemed very far-fetched becomes really obvious. Like, wow, that makes sense. Mm. And especially as I get older, you think, well, I've been around this for a long time there's got to be a lot of holes in this. Now that I've been around the block, there's lots of holes in this. It's not like that. The more I go around the block and around the block and around the block and been this for decades, the more I think this is more solid than I can ever imagine. Mm. This is, this makes more sense. And from this vantage point of being, you know, North of 50 years old, it makes lots of sense. So mm. um, has Krishna got up on the countertop and danced to me? No, he hasn't done that yet. Uh, but, but, if you were to tell me after, you know, re reading the Bhagavad Gita or just being around, like, I fully believe in all this stuff, then I would think you're a little weird personally. I, I, I think these people were just like, I'm totally in. I 100% believe everything. If you're one of those people, I think you're a little weird. Easy there, Rogo. Let's not get so judgmental, okay? I just think there's a, <laughs> it, it, you're, you're not going to make ev okay. evolve in this practice. It's not a practice. Well, that might that might have been a faith it, from a previous life. Maybe it's maybe it's easier for some people. Let's let's leave that open. Doesn't make them weird. I think it's weird. I think I think part of this <laughs> tradition is asking lots what of questions. Weird mean. Where's Mara? Maybe they've asked those questions. Mara, already. I think it was weird. Mara used to come to class every morning before we did the podcast. Cl class every morning, and I'd be like, "Do you have any questions?" She'd be like, "No, Prabhu." I was like, that's weird. <laughs> that's Why doesn't she have any questions? <laughs> I you don't think she's weird. Oh, she didn't believe any of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so she didn't have to ask any questions. It wasn't, it didn't mean that much. <laughs> yeah, she got but, sucked in. But you know, um, 
actually, you know, so like Jordy's saying, like, what was it, right? Like, was there a certain experience? Like, is it a snap kind of thing? And I think we're both saying it wasn't a snap, right? It was small a, increments of small realization. Increment. Small for, for me, small increments, and yeah. that's how we find faith. And, and really, uh, you know, like in our tradition, you know, we have this idea of this progression, right? Like, from faith, it begins with faith, with some initial faith. And then that faith deepens up to the point of Krishna Prema or, you know, divine love where the conviction is is most complete, where that faith is fully blossomed, right? So so really for all of us, we, we should understand that way. It doesn't, you don't have to like, no, you don't have to have some kind of divine revelation where you fall off your horse and you see sweet baby Krishna to say, I'm in, I'm going to practice this seriously. But the idea is, Initially, there's some faith. This makes sense. These people got a lot of answers. They're cool people. I like what they're doing. Um, I want to. I want to learn more about this. And then comes sadhusanga that you begin to associate with people that are practicing it more, and and from that you de you develop the conviction. I want to practice this seriously. I want guidance. I want to. I want to practice this with guidance of people that really have practiced it and know it well. And and then and then you you know then it's called bhajana kriya, right? Like some some purification through through the practices under guidance and then there's a uh you know a stage called an art and Navriti where like you start now if you can follow it that far and start to feel the effects of an art and Navriti, in other words my lower nature is decreasing my higher nature is increasing now your faith is going to start to get really stronger and then you can hit a stage called nishta where you're solid right it's mm -hmm. like you, you, there's a lot of solidity in your faith and this makes sense and, and I, i'm not even wasting any more time with other stuff because i'm getting results it, it's it is transforming my life very clearly and then it just deepens and deepens and deepens up to the point of pure love that's how it works you know i want to take i want to backpedal a little bit because back people pedal. do get into this with different levels of faith and that's completely reasonable not weird um, it, it's not weird, actually, okay. because people are coming into it from a previous life. Right. And one time I was saying exactly what I was saying. I remember being a brahmachari and preaching to some kid in the ashram like, hey, anybody that gets into it real quick, I start to question them. And then a, a, I won't mention his name, but a devotee that you and I know and respect. Uh, and uh, back then he, he had our, he had been a brahmachari for maybe 12 years or something. Okay. He said not not. And he was very like, you know, sort of a regal looking brahmachari. He regal said, looking. Regal looking. He oh, wore a crown. <laughs> he had a cape and, and he was a scepter. Like a prince. <laughs> he was a prince of Brahmachari. Okay, he had a regal bearing. He had a regal bearing. But he said to me, well, not in my case. I said, how did you get into it? He goes, I was waiting for a payphone. And the person on the phone was like in a wheelchair, paralyzed, it was a lady or something like that. She was talking on the phone. And um, he was a little impatient and he, the lady got off the phone and just said, don't look at me like you're. Um, the lady started preaching to him. Don't look at me like I have some like I'm some victim or something like, like I'm that. Some victim. I'm not a victim. Everything I have right now is due to my karma. I fully accept that you're no better than me at any moment. You can be <laughs> in such a position. I don't know. Maybe he was giving her an attitude or something. At any moment, you can be in this position, and in the next life, I can do this. You know why? Because the soul is eternal, and the body's just got different karma. And this is the karma I have for a moment, and that'll change. And I'm not this body in the first place. And the, and this brahmachari back then, who wasn't a brahmachari, he said, "Where did you hear all this philosophy from?" And he goes, "At the Sunday feast at the Krishna temple I just came from." <laughs> and he said, "I'm going there right now." He said he went there and he quit his entire life and moved into the ashram and never left the ashram for. Was that um, a devotee that kind of had a thing going on up in Harlem? No. Okay, I don't know who it was. Sarvatma. Oh, Sarvatma. Okay, no kidding. From Argentina. I know Sarvatma, so, yeah, I know Sarvatma very well. He's a friend, you know. close friend of mine. Yeah. I didn't know that story though. Actually, you know what? Now that you say it, I, I think I do remember him telling. But so there that. are people who just they hear it. And it sort of wakes them up like, that's right. It's not. Like, ever, 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 ever have one of those things where someone says, you know, you're talking about some person. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Gita, Gita Priya. Oh, that weird. I had a dream about Gita Priya. You know, like, something happens, some spontaneous recall of like, that's right. This all makes sense. This is where I'm supposed to be. That little blue coward boy yeah. is the supreme personality. So it's not necessarily weird, but it may be weird. Yeah. It, 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 may it be appears weird. peculiar. And yeah. I will say, 
there's people who also who are more doubtful than others. They yeah. just can't have faith in anything. And as the Gita says, for the doubtful soul, there's neither pleasure in this world nor the next world. It's it, it, so it, you, you got to be you, ha, you should have some discernment. But if you're going to really live in doubt your entire life, why not just doubt your doubts? Mm-hmm. Ah. Then, then you're then you're in a loop. I mean, then what, <laughs> <laughs> you can never come out of that loop. <laughs> should oh, I get man. out of the loop? I don't know. I'm down to my doubts. <laughs> anyway. Okay, I, I think that I I think the the our main theme to Jordy is, uh, he says I you know I want to believe but I'm not there yet. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Take up the practice and see where it leads you. You know, open, to, yeah. Walk towards the closet. See what yeah, comes out. Be be open. Uh, don't worry that you you don't have complete conviction. That's something that that may or may not come. Give it a try. Give it a give it a fair try. Right. Give, Give it a fair, fair try. try. Enter yeah. the experiment. There you go. It's an exp- look at it like this. It this is an experiment. Yeah. It's an experiment. What could go wrong? <laughs> well, <laughs> where, where should I start? You waste yeah, yeah. your entire life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun it's fun. Let's face it, at the very least, Christian concept is very fun. We eat good fo- food, we go to exotic places, we have a great community. We have a great way to deal with loss and pain. You know, okay. we don't we don't sit around complaining and blaming. We got All right. incredible desserts. <laughs> That's awesome desserts. We don't do great with uh, health all the time, but <laughs> sometimes we get a little paunchy. <laughs> all right, you ready for the second part of Jordy's question? Yes. Okay, yes. I'll read it, and you start with this one, and then I'll speak up to you. Okay. okay. You take this yeah. and run with it. What does it mean? because right? we throw these phrases out and stuff what does it mean to embrace or surrender to krishna in this life okay well first of all surrender oftentimes isn't just like an on off switch like i believe in jesus put up your hands you know come forward and get you know get saved yeah. it is a it's a moment to moment trust that krishna is the controller you know sometimes i might uh might think uh like we you know we become frustrated. We try to control our situation, but we got to trust Krishna has got a bigger plan for me. Krishna is a benevolent God of love, and the okay. Krishna's got a greater plan that immediately release relieves us from material distress. Then there's the idea of just like these simple practices. Like I, for me, it was this friend of mine said, "Ragu, chant." What and what is chanting? It's remembering and appreciating, isn't it? It's remembering and appreciating Krishna. Are the source okay. of everything, the source of everything I love, you know, it's Krishna. You know, sometimes you wake up and say, what a beautiful day. Okay. That comes from Krishna. So when I chant, I think, oh, Krishna, I'm so fortunate to have Krishna in my life. I'm, I'm calling Krishna deeper into my life. And I take that moment, that one round, that 108 beads. And I remember Krishna, the Lord of my life. And that is a surrender. What, what have I surrendered? I surrendered a moment of the day or so 10 time, minutes of the day. Energy. I surrendered time. Attention. Right? Especially attention. attention, right? It's like my attention. Sometimes you have a little altar in your house and you walk around and you look for a little, I mean, you know, I'm walking around looking at these beautiful flowers and say, I'm going to offer that on my little altar to my little deities. That's a type of surrender. It, 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 hmm. And what's happening is Krishna's taking up your, your time. Before we eat, we're thinking, ah, this food is coming from God. I want to offer this back to God. So ha- what happens is Krishna or God or religion or it's not it's not limited to the hour and a half Sunday morning. It becomes a meditation all day long. So eventually you're not even in this world anymore. So surrendering to Krishna means everything is for Krishna, of course. In the hmm. same way if you have a kid, everything's for the kid. What does the kid want? Is the kid hungry? The kid, right? Oh, that's a that's an interesting example. You like that? Yeah, well, you can continue if you have more you'd like to share. No, that's good. But, okay. Yeah. Well, if, I, like I, anal- if you like that analogy, you keep that, Kastuba. Okay. Well, no, the reason why I like it is because it kind of it kind of segues into my. This is another question. These are great questions Jordy's asking, by the way. Um, but it kind of segues into the first way that it approached Jordy's question, which is, what does it mean to embrace or surrender to Krishna? When you say it like that, like a parent, think about a parent, right? Like it's like they're they're living their own life right they're living their own life 
um, you know, for so many years. And then once that child comes, then it's like there's a change where it's like, now I'm living for the child. That's surrender, right? In other words, it, it has to do with how you make decisions in life. I used to make decisions based with based on a certain paradigm. Let me pursue my own pleasure. And then it changed and it, and it became, let me act in such a way for the benefit of my child. You know, that I, I think parent, I'm not a parent. I would assume parents could relate to that idea. You know, it's like, that's called surrender, right? So, so my, where I would start with this question is what does it mean to surrender to Krishna? It means I, I step out of the center of the picture. It's a whole new paradigm now. I'm making decisions based on a different paradigm. And I'm saying, I used to think that the purpose of this life was to pursue my own pleasures. That's changed now. I have a whole different idea. I, I have an idea that ultimately there's a, there's a, a benevolent, loving uh, source to everything. And that it's, it's, it's in everyone's best interest, interest to, to reconnect to that, to realize that and reconnect to that. And so now I make my decisions based on that. I recognize my position as dependent on um, and, and benefited from my connection to that root. I recognize every other living being in connection to that root, and I relate to them now. I used to relate to them as potential objects of my pleasure or displeasure. Now I relate to them as all being connected to that root. I try to make my decisions based on that. Now I'm acting as an agent or, or as a, you know, as a um, extension ideally, you know, of that connection to God. So now I'm surrendering, right? I'm making different decisions, I would. And everything, as you say, like from like, what am I going to do with the next 10 minutes? To what am I going to do with the next 10 years? To what am I going to do with my entire life? I'm trying, you know, trying to make it all an offering. To me, that's has a lot to do with what it means to surrender to Krishna, right? No, we should do a show. How yeah. do people get into Krishna consciousness? We could do that, Raghunath. That so, way? in other words, let's just ignore everything because Stuart just said it's no longer time. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying, no. trying to get a response from you. <laughs> you you went to the chat board. I saw that on the chat board too, Raghunath, but I, <laughs> I, I responded to what you said, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Now, 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 here's another thing, right? When I, when I was a brahmachari, when I was a monk, right, like yeah. at, at, age, at age 21, if my idea of surrender to Krishna was really this, it was like, it was like the Marines. It's, you join the Marines, you do what they tell you, you know? Yeah. And, and so kind of like my relationship with my guru at that point was literally, if he would have said, uh, Kastuba, tomorrow you get on you're an airplane. Scale, you're going to scale the Empire State Building. Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's a little bizarre. But actually, like he could have said, tomorrow you go to China, you know? And I want you to dedicate the rest of your life to like, you know, teaching about bhakti in China, I would have been like, okay, Gurudev, and I would have gotten on that airplane the next day and gone, you know, like, that's what surrender was. It was like, my life is, is in the hands of Krishna and Krishna's representative. So there is that too, you know, and, and, and I think part of like life means, or, or like the life in bhakti yoga <laughs> is that we're progressing to the idea that Krishna, my entire life is yours. Yeah, I, it's it's not about me trying to go out and find the kicks that I was trying to find or the pleasures or the experiences or the accomplishments that I thought were important in relation to my own identity or something. Like that. It's kind of like I live for you out of love and really whatever you want from me, I want to offer you that, that that's, you know, we got to come to that full surrender. Right. Yeah. And on a, on a side note, you, you, you might fail a little bit. And then you get another chance and you might but that's what I'm saying. it's developing chance. yeah it's probably you know kostuba i tell you i can say kostuba he was very very fixed from the from the get-go he was very very fixed in the, especially in the very beginning i really struggled oh so i've been I'm slipping totally is that what you're this. saying i'm totally not into this what <laughs> you're saying i'm slipping no, <laughs> like especially slipping. back like years back ago he was pretty good days. no i mean meaning from the very beginning you were very fixed yeah. there were a lot of a, a, a lot of us like we're wavering like uh couldn't get, I mean, I mean, the famous story of Miko Stuba in a New Jersey mall. So we're having a whole morning program in his van, singing, chanting, reading. It's and then he's like, cold. all right, we ate, ate a little breakfast and I don't, in a hot pot or something like that. And then it's like a cold winter morning. Now we're going to go outside. We're in a mall and we're going to distribute Chaitanya Charitamritas and all the brahmacharis get out. And Kostuba is like, come on, let's go, Raghunath. 
I wasn't even rocking out then. I was Bakhtar Ray. Let's go, Bakhtar Ray. And I was just like, I'm not getting out of this car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting You're out like, of this car. On, we just had that whole morning program. We just gave Bhagavad Bhagav Gita class. I was like, you can go. I'm not. I'm not getting out of this car. car. I'm not getting out of this car. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes our, our our surrender is like, and okay, we okay. I failed the test this morning. I'll meet you back here for lunch. I'm gonna go into the mall. I, I didn't go to the mall. I think I just stayed paralyzed in that a black van of yours. I don't remember that. I don't. Remember I do. That. I remember like it was yesterday. It was like that was black van, which had like some kind of panther on the back, etched into the back window. <laughs> I remember that day. I was like traumatized <laughs> that day. <sighs> yeah, but but no, but the point is, and, and this is something that we've shared, you know, on the show, and uh, sometimes everybody's got a different path. Right. Like every devotee that's come to Krishna, the path is a little different. Some are kind of more like straight arrows. Some are more kind of like bendy or windy or bumpy. That's all cool. Right. It's the, the question is just like, what's my next step? And that's surrender. Right. In other words, I like what's that. my next step? What's, what's my can, next step, Krishna? What's my that's next a great step? Prayer. What's my next but it, step? If that, as long as that's done completely sincerely, right, without any pretension, without any phony pseudo spiritual whatever, you know, as long as it's real, what's my next step? Then you're on that path, and that is surrender. You know, what's and my some next? Some people next are step? ready to make gigantic steps, and some, some people, people make like, a big step. Yeah, some people are like I want a little step, one little step. That's okay yeah. too. Krishna reciprocates little with little steps. He does. So that's surrender too. And anything more about that? You know, be, and then ultimately, you know, you you might sit here and say, "Oh, Kastu was fixed, and he was surrendered, and this and that." But really, I know, right? That surrender's got to go deeper and deeper because we're talking about external surrender, like doing being dutiful. But but the goal in this is that that surrender become you know entirely in, internal as well, where my very thoughts, you know, are all surrendered, are all offered, right? And and that's that's the real depth of spirituality that we want to work towards, you know, that we're that we're cultivating, you know. But you know, right now I may say I'm going to surrender the next hour by reading Shrimad Bhagavatam. Right. And I and I take it in. Um, I, I I learn from it. I hopefully purify my consciousness to some degree because I hope to come to that because I'm not because where I'm not right now is where all of my thoughts are surrendered. My entire mind, not just my body, my body, my mind, my words It's my body, my words, ultimately my mind are all offered. That's full surrender. Uh, and, and and that's that's. And, and, and that's where it gets really beautiful. And that's where you get into the really esoteric side of it, where it's like, then it's like, you're really connecting to Krishna, right? Not just as a, not just as like a theme or a goal in the distance of my spiritual practice, but like as a, a, a as the, the dearest friend, you know? Like that's that. where I wanted to go. And that's like where that I wanted starts. to go. All right. All right. What's next on the list? We got a question from D. D. O'Neill. I don't know. It's just D E E E E E E. It's just D. 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 That's the thing about um, <laughs> the Discord thread. The Discord threads, all <laughs> fake names. Yeah, D. D used to be my nickname when I was a kid. Did I ever tell you that, Rogan? Why? Because my name is David. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that worked for you. Why? <laughs> yeah. You know what mine was? Uh, don't, don't hit me with like one of these bad nicknames that you're called like scooter scooter. <laughs> get out of here. Scooter for real. Even Akiko laughed at that one. Scooter. I mean, you call something like, like Scott scooter or something like that. Scooter. Scooter. How, it was my kid, did, my little kid nickname. Who called you scooter? My dad. Okay. It was a dad thing. All right. Come here, scooter. All right. You ready? Scooter. This I one's asked for you. him. Give me a nickname. I you want a T-bone? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Scooter. laughs> All right, go on. All right, so this comes from D. D asks, um, oh, this was kind of a continuation. So D said, this is this is a reference to yesterday's, what we read yesterday from Shirin Bhagavatam. I think it was yesterday. Maybe it was a day or two before. Reading the purport to the verse from Shirin Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 4, chapter 22, text 32, which we read. At the end, it says, you ready? Mm -hmm. Prabhupada wrote in the commentary, instead of becoming interested in sense gratification, one should divert their activities 
to satisfy the senses of the supreme soul. Okay? So here's the question. What are the senses of the supreme soul? What is satisfying the senses of the, of the supreme soul? Does that mean chanting? Does it mean following the regulative principles? Does it mean offering the results of our actions to Krishna? Or does it mean all the above? That, that's kind of closely related to uh, yeah, it's, I think it's very similar majority's to question. we just said. Yeah, but there's more. I think there's more. There, there's something specific here. It's like, what do we mean by the senses of the Supreme Soul? You want me to start with it? You want to start with it? I want to hear your answer, truthfully. Okay. Well, and and this got, I think we had a question like this recently. Maybe it was last weekend or something like that, where we were talking about our, may, or maybe just during the week we we're talking about it, but that our conception of the Supreme is not without senses, right? Our, our, our perception of our connection to the Supreme is we have senses. Why? Because ultimately God has senses, right? We have the, we have the ability to see, we have the ability to hear and taste, et cetera, to feel and so on. We have desires. We have desires because because ultimately they're right. coming from a source so so similar can i similar, squirrel you out here for a second I, well, why <laughs> it's a good squirrel it's a good squirrel i was thinking yesterday wouldn't it be great if everybody was actually the same like all the women were exactly the same all the clothing were exactly the same all the houses were exactly the same the cities were that way it would minimize your desires because everything is the same but there's differences in this world because there's differentiation in the spiritual realm. So we have a, just a reflection. And therefore, when, that, when those desires, which all lead to Krishna in the spiritual realm, are left in this world, the desires get us more into trouble. Okay. That's not, that's it, man. That's it. I thought that was <laughs> sort of deep. That's so deep. It's blowing my mind. Imagine oh. that. If we were all the same, like I looked at you and we're talking. But we're just the same. Well, they they say that variety is the mother of enjoyment, right? So it's like, how would your <laughs> desires get fulfilled if everything was the same? We see that with Krishna, right? Krishna has so he has so many varieties of love with so many different people, right? And they're all different. They all bring something different. So, and Krishna enjoys through senses. Even there's that verse, uh, Brahma Samhita. You know what I'm talking about? Is Karuna here? She'll know it. Uh, each each sense acts on behalf of the yeah. other senses. Angani yasya sakalendriya vrittimanti pasyanti panti kalyanti chiram jiganti. The eyes can hear, and the yeah. ears can see. Yeah. So so, but the idea is that we exp it, w If you go back to the Vedas, right? W how is in, in the beginning? How do we refer to um, Krishna's presence in this world? He's you know he comes as Vishnu and he's called the Purusha. Right, Purusha means the enjoyer. How do we enjoy? We enjoy through senses. It's just that Krishna, Karuna does know that one. Maybe we'll have her chant that in a bit. Um, but uh, Krishna enjoys through senses, just like we enjoy through senses. We're given equipment to enjoy through. Krishna's equipment is non-different from him. Ours is like this artificial equipment, just like you're given a virtual reality, you're given artificial eyes and artificial, you know, ears and so on. But uh, so when we speak of satisfying Krishna's senses, we mean that, yeah, there is a person that enjoys. And when we switch the paradigm and stop thinking of satisfying these temporary material senses, these temporary, limited, faulty, uh, you know, cheap senses, and we think, let me satisfy the senses of the one that I love. Let me let me satisfy Krishna's senses. Uh, it means and again, this kind of goes on a scale too, right? Like it, it can mean chanting. It can mean that I'm going to take the next 10 minutes and, and, and you know what, Raghunath? What? I once, I once received this bit of advice, uh, for chanting Japa because you know, when we chant, and I think this is really important for chanting Kirtan, uh, but when we chant Japa, you know, sometimes we're inattentive, you know, it can be hard to just keep our mind fixed, but one way that you can fix the mind when you're chanting Japa, meaning you're chanting on, on beads, chanting, uh, one Maha Mantra on each beat as you go around is you can chant in such a way where you chant in such a way you chant in such a way where you try to please the ears of God, right? The senses of God, try to chant it sweet, try to chant it in a mood that's pleasant to hear. Not just like, imagine if you're, if, if someone was saying your name is like, ruggle, 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 but it was like, ruggle, 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 
Raghunata. So, 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 you know, um, try to channel your... call Krishna. There Sweet you go. That's thing to Krishna. That's satisfying like to Krishna's do? senses. I like to read to, you know, part of puja is this vandanam. You offer prayers mm -hmm. so at the end of puja. You sing to your deities. You offer prayers to your deities and you're doing it for their pleasure. And so we chant Japa or do Kirtan. It's the same thing. We're, we're not just singing and we're not singing even just to the people there. We are singing to Lord Krishna. Even when you say, I'm going to go to the temple. I want to wear something nice. So Krishna you see? sees me. Krishna sees me. He has eyes. Something nice. I like to put on tilak because I like Krishna to see me with tilak on. It's not because I want the other devotees to know that I'm like serious about this. It's I want Krishna to see me. I want there Krishna to be happy with me. What other people think of me, who cares? What Krishna thinks of me, ah, that's I care about that. That's a great point. You know, what you're saying, all of this conversation is reminding me, this is, it's great when I get these, uh, Memorances of my time with my guru, but I remember once I was brand new, totally brand new, and I was in the room with him and some other devotees who were very senior to me. I don't even remember, and they had to go and talk about something, meet about something. We're in some house. The house had a little altar, like in the living room, and uh, and so my guru said, "Okay, you and I, let's go and in, go into this room, and we'll discuss this stuff." And Kastuba, or maybe it was even Bhakti David at the time, I don't even remember. So I said, you sit here and you chant for Krishna's pleasure, right? Because there's like a little altar there. I said, you chant, in other words, you chant your Jabba, chant for mm -hmm. Krishna's pleasure, right? In other words, we really want to, you know, what do we do when we eat in this tradition, right? We, we cook thinking, meditating on the pleasure of Krishna and then offering it to Krishna because he has senses, he can taste it, you know? So that's, that's, that's this philosophy that we're not more than God, you know, God, we have senses. I mean, God has senses too. It, our our bodies are facsimiles of spiritual bodies, right? They have similar equipment, but it's just cheap stuff, right? It's, it's like a it's, costume body. Yeah, or it's like like, a, like try, a digital body a or right a costume. Yeah, like it's a facsimile. It's not real, actually. In in it's the like ultimate, a mannequin. Sense. it's like a mannequin. Yeah, or like a digital body, like in a droid, in a video a game. Droid. It could be any. Yeah, it's cheap stuff that we got. We think this is it. No. This, just look how it's breaking down all the time and and it's so weak like we need these glasses now we got to put pieces of like plastic in front of our eyes so that just they can so see can properly see, now. like it's like yeah read really, a book it's kind of sad you know, right? I, you know this thing i'm talking about about wearing clothes also dressing for krishna it's yeah. interesting because a lot of times especially with clothing or with fashion it is all about how i want people to perceive me in the world so people yeah. tend to think well I guess they're just going to have to get rid of all sense of fashion. And it's just not true. You're fashion and be good. I want to look, I want to present to Krishna. And that is that, that can be done free from ego. Whereas anything disconnected to eat to Krishna often just becomes there just to serve our ego. So it truthfully bhakti yoga is the only way to really conquer that ego. Otherwise, even our austerity, sometimes we just do also for ego. We have to put Krishna uh, at the beginning of all these things. And that is the surrender to Krishna you're talking about or asking about. Yeah, the, you surrender in different ways, right? I, I, I always thought of Indra Prabhu, who was like a very person that was like very surrendered to Krishna, right? His whole life. He was this, uh, he, he was like a monk. He lived in the Vrindavan temple. He did the most incredible kirtan. Um, you know, that you could ever hear in his life. And he was almost like uh, so serious in his surrender. No nonsense, right? He's like an Iskon saint. If we had a, like, yeah, yeah. he's like saint, one of them, yeah. He's one of yeah. the Iskon saints. And, and so I, I always remember that he used to dress the deities there, um, Radha Shamasundar, right? The, the deities of Radha and Krishna in the, in the Krishna Balaram temple. And I mean, so beautifully, right? Like such attention to detail with such um splendor and you know just you know stunning you know but he used to dress like in rags practically himself, himself you know sure so he was like you know he, you can imagine he probably could have dressed himself in some flamboyant you know way and tried to attract attention this is part of what it means to i tell you you want to going back to the previous question what's a formula for surrender to krishna here's one idea right let Krishna be the attractive one, right? Let, let Krishna play that role. In, in other words, we try to be the center. We try to be the attractor. 
let Krishna be the attraction. And, and so I see he did that practically by like, he dressed in the most simple way himself. I'm not saying that, you, like you're saying, there's many ways to surrender. Someone at, like when we read about Radharani, right? There's that, uh, the song, Radhe Jai Jai Madhava Daite. Yeah. It says, Damadar Rati Vardhana Veshe, you know, that- Yeah, wears very uh, beautiful clothing to attract. You, yeah, you dress yourself in a, in a beautiful way to increase Lord Damodar's love and attachment for you. So it's like, or that goes back to that, um, I, I think I shared this story with you before, but there was a story of Andal, that, that, that this, the great poet, she was a saint, one of the Alwars, one of these early, early, early Bhakti saints. And when she when do you remember this? And when she was a little girl, her, fa her father was one of the priests in the, the Ranganath temple, the temple of the Lord, to Lord Vishnu in, um, you know, in South India, very important temple. And uh, so because her father was one of the priests in this, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big position because like there's thousands and thousands of people come there from all over to visit, you know, it's, it's like being so the Pope. it's, it's something like it, it, Yeah. Not quite exactly being the Pope, but it's, it's, yeah. So, so she had access to like, you know, the things that her father had access to. And one of them was they made these beautiful garlands, you know, flower garlands, Tulsi garlands, um, to be offered to, to, to Lord Vishnu. And she used to, one day she used to put on those garlands herself before they were offered mm. and look at herself in the mirror. And her father caught her doing that one time. And it was like, no, 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 no. And this is standard, right? In, in temples, in, in temple, in the rituals that whatever we offer, we offer to, to, to Krishna or to Vishnu first. And then we might wear that garland after, but not first, right? First, we it's offered to wear Krishna. it and then offer it. We don't let the incense smell it. Oh, it smells pretty good. Now <laughs> yeah. I'm going to offer it. <laughs> yeah. We don't taste the food. It's a little harder with the smell, but definitely with the yeah. garland, right? You don't have to put it on. And so her father saw her doing that. I was like, no, 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 that's not how it works. You know, don't ever do that again. And then he had a dream later and where, where Lord Vishnu spoke to, to him. And in that, here we're talking about dreams and far things that happen, right? So in that dream, Lord Ranganath, Lord Vishnu said to him, no, 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 you don't understand. When she puts on that garland, she's not thinking I'm making myself beautiful. She's making herself beautiful for me. And I, I love that she wears that garland on first, you know, and I, I appreciate that. And so then, so he says, don't forbid her from doing this. So then he had to go back and tell his daughter, oh, it's actually okay. <laughs> the Lord said it's well, okay. I had a realization my first trip to Vrindavan and yeah. the, the, you know, what was put through my head was you're not the enjoyer. Krishna is the enjoyer. You're not the enjoyer. You're here to serve the enjoyer, not to be the enjoyer. And so one day I went out and I bought like six chum chums. Do you know what chum chums <laughs> okay. are? I know what a chum chum is. Well, it's like, I, I never had a chum chum. And so everyone was like, a chum chum. like a, a little mini. Donut soaked in delicious syrup. Syrup, yeah. So I was like, I bought six chum chums, and I ate six chum chums. And I immediately—that's a bit excessive. Down. Yeah, so I, was, I, I was new. I was trying to deal with a. I'm a young celibate. I was trying to deal with life, and I I dealt with it by medicating my <laughs> other urges by eating licit appropriate maha sweets, yeah. and I got severely um, incapacitated incapacitated and so and my laying on my back um i realized i tried to be the enjoyer in vrindavan and now mm. i'm being i'm getting immediate reaction for it mm. we, we're not the enjoyer krishna is the enjoyer maybe i could share one uh, last uh story before we end today sure Does it so involve you, with you overeating no it, or it involves it involves it involves um some years back you know, the deities at the Bhakti Center, Radham Early Dar, yes. they, they used to be in Cleveland, right? And then they were trans, transported to New York and eventually into what we now call the Bhakti Center. And um, you commonly in temples, there's the large deities like the Radha Early Dar and the Bhakti Center, but they're also worshiped with small deities, the, the Vijaya Mortis, they're called, right? They're, 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 it's the same forms, but in a small, and, and they can, the reason why the small ones are there, you can do different things with them. They can't do with the large ones, like bathe them every day or do different rituals. You know, the, the, those kind of sweet rituals, put them on a swing or whatever it may be. Don't tell the secret rituals. 
Okay. So, so it's secret. Something I'm not like revealing that. anything secret here. Oh, well, actually, this this may have been a secret. What I'm about to reveal, but it's open public knowledge now. Okay. So it's no. So um, so they were worshipped uh, there by really wonderful dev- devotees there uh, in, in Cleveland. Um, M- Mother Kamag- Kamagiri, she, uh, she's just a saintly woman, and she was their pujari. And her daughter, and I'm forgetting her daughter's name now. I feel really bad. It starts with an S. It's slipping my mind. But in any case, in the t- what they said was, what, okay, I should tell the whole story now. Tell the that, story. Uh, that, that so one year at the Bhakti Center, the, when Radha Murlidor were brought to New York, the Vijay Mortis, the smaller Mortis weren't. So they were separated. Mm. And they're still being worshipped by, I believe, by Mother Kamagiri up in Cleveland. Mm. And so one year they were reunited. The, the, the smaller deities were brought to, to the Bhakti Center, and there's a whole festival. We had a whole, we had a festival for it the whole weekend reuniting festival okay it was a reuniting thing and, and and so then everybody different people were speaking especially the people that had worshipped those deities and lived in that temple going back many years and so kamagiri shared uh, you know beautiful memories and so on. and then her daughter shared and her daughter shared this story <laughs> okay so it, to people that aren't familiar with temples and the standards and all that this won't mean as much but to people that <laughs> Do it, it'll it'll strike them I'm on the edge of my seat here. Come on. So she said that her and her little friend, when they were little girls, like I don't know how, like eight years old or something, they said they used to go sneak on the altar when no one was around, and they used to kiss. Brought a Merle, well, kiss Merle Dar <laughs> on the lips, right? Because they and so like you don't do that, right? But uh, but everyone was kind of amused by the story. But afterwards, I, I spoke to. Uh, Radna, so I said, Radna, what do you think, think about that? And he said, yeah, well, there was no lust in them. That was pure, you know, it's like, they, 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 you know, it's like, that was, not, that was pure bhakti. Yeah. You, don't you don't see moves. You don't see me even. Get, uh, well, I, 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 no, I used to kiss Jesus and Mary. <laughs> I'm here. serious. I don't think I've ever told anybody you that. Kiss the kiss cross Jesus like that? Mary every day. Yeah, kiss the cross, kiss my Mary. Genuflect. Every day, every morning, every evening. Are you the one that got your cat started on this? Because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. I had an altar as a child. He used to kiss to Mary. I guess people do that. But you don't go and kiss Krishna on the altar like that. And I don't do it anymore. You used to? No, I've never did it. I've <laughs> okay. never did it. <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's attractive. Krishna is okay. attractive. Now, I have okay. a question. Why was Mara calling me in the middle of the show? What's with that, Mara? I didn't know what's going on with that. <laughs> she's like oh oops <laughs> were you trying to share a secret message with me like i was going off like, like going bring him back bring him back Help. 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 i'm in danger i'm in danger <laughs> i can't get out of the house this is the only chance i have to communicate <laughs> but i'm on the show it doesn't work <laughs> all right so anyway so we're, we're gonna miss age. we're gonna miss the next couple shows right Yep, and we're going to be back on Monday morning. No, no. Monday, no. Monday, Tuesday. Monday. Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern Time, regular time. But we're going to be in Villa Vrindavan, and everybody's yeah. going to be there. Yeah. Right now we got a Kiko G. we got Sri Rupa. we got Gita Priya over here. But everybody's going to be there. Mara. Mara's going to be there. We got Kelly Skinner back here. Kelly Skinner. Sidney <laughs> Lunsford in the back there, too. I keep them all. Catherine A is here. Got them all tied up. Mm, 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 na, 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 na.